Order 99 was designed by Darth Sidious, and its sole purpose was to contain or exterminate the Separatist Alliance if everything else failed. Once Order 99 has been commanded to the battle droids, their systems would restart, and then all battle droids would open fire on any member of the Separatist Alliance. Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. What if the Jedi executed Order 99? Now, I had a lot of fun writing this, appreciate you guys watching, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on the planet Bogoa, a planet that the Separatist Alliance recently won after three long days of warfare against the Republic. And as the new Separatist base was undergoing its final days of construction, Count Dooku, Darth Sidious, and General Grievous were all here to oversee a special creation. Since the start of the war, select Separatist engineers were chosen to work on a special project titled Order 99. And after years of trial and error experiments with programming on every type of droid, the experiment was complete. This order was designed so that, when executed by either Sidious, Dooku, or Grievous, the entire Separatist droid army would suddenly have its programming completely restart, and then all battle droids would immediately fire at any member of the Separatist Alliance, starting with the highest rank, and eventually just firing on each other until nothing was left. This was designed for a couple of reasons. One, when the grand plans conclude and the war comes to an end and they can take over the Republic, the three leaders need a simple way to dispose of the Separatist army. And second, the message can be sent only to a small group of droids to kill a traitorous member of the Separatists if need be as well. And it was designed so that only the three of them could execute this order. Dooku and Sidious didn't necessarily want Grievous to have this access, but he would be killed before the war was over anyways. It was basically Order 66, but for droids. And so the three of them watched, as test after test of this order was successful. But as the three of them analyzed the testing of Order 99, the Jedi Order was tracking them down. For months, the Jedi and clones had been working tirelessly to track Grievous' ship, and in a battle on Felucia, clone commandos managed to sneak a tracker deep inside of his ship. And now, the best of the Order were coming to take down Grievous. Grandmaster Yoda, Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker flew down on a shuttle to the tracking beacon, located on the surface of Bogoa. On both sides of the Jedi's shuttle were clone starfighters, 20 of them total, descending down to find the droid general and destroy him once and for all. But none of them knew that the Sith Lords were also located there, and they prepared for battle as the ground got closer and closer every second. Inside the base, as the testing was ending, Sidious tilted his head and felt into the Force. With a sudden realization, he looked to Dooku and said that the Jedi were somehow approaching. He was an expert at feeling the Jedi and the Force, especially Anakin, and he had to escape immediately. Dooku and Grievous ordered all droid fighters into the air, transferred all the data back to their main hideout on Coruscant, and began moving to the hangar to escape. And in the air, the Jedi shuttle along with the clone fighters began evasive maneuvers and engaged the Separatist fighters. The Jedi focused on getting through, while the clones took on the droids. And before long, the Jedi emerged through the clouds and they saw this new base. Windu ordered the pilot to fire down to the hangar, and so he did. And down inside the hangar, Dooku and Sidious got into their ship, but the missile from the Jedi shuttle shook the hangar, and debris began falling from the ceiling. Dooku turned to catch the debris, but it was too late. A huge chunk of it slammed right into General Grievous, and he was completely crushed underneath it. Dooku was going to try to lift it off the cyborg, but Sidious said there was no time, and there was no way to someone survives being crushed like that. Grievous was gone. And so the two Sith Lords flew out of the hangar, just as the rest of it came crashing down. All of the vulture droids in the air suddenly changed course, creating a protective formation around Dooku's ship. The Jedi and clones chased down the escaping ship, trying to bring it down, find out who was inside. But the vulture droids were not easy to get through. Once they were in space, the Jedi ship finally locked on, but right as they were about to fire, the Sith jumped to hyperspace. The clones took out the final vulture droids, and Windu looked to the others. Obi-Wan said they could still check the base and see if anything valuable was left behind. And so the Jedi went back towards the surface. This was not them taking back the planet, as the Separatists occupied the capital city heavily, but this base was secluded and now abandoned, allowing the Jedi to search it for as long as they need. And once inside, the four Jedi would be assigned to an area of the base, along with a clone squad to find whatever they could. As Anakin searched, he wished Ahsoka was here, but she left the Order a while back. 
He was getting used to being without her, though he didn't love it, and as he and his squad moved into the destroyed hangar, Captain Rex urgently called for Anakin. Anakin ran over to Rex and saw it. Deep inside of the rubble, a mechanical hand was clawing at the rocks, and a pair of yellow, now bloodshot eyes stared up at Anakin. It was grievous, and his breathing was ragged, and he went unconscious. He was on the verge of death. Anakin called to Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Windu, and they came over here, talking about what to do next. They could destroy Grievous for good, or they could take him back to the temple. He was no threat in his weakened state, and perhaps they could provide some intel on the Separatists. It was unlikely, but the Jedi needed every hope they could get during this war, so Grievous, or at least what remained of him, was soon carefully loaded onto a Republic Star Destroyer and taken back to the temple. After around a full day, General Grievous began to open his eyes with no idea where he was. He began looking around, his eyes darting around as he began to realize where he was. He'd never been in the Jedi Temple before, but he'd heard more than enough about it to know what this was. And he was submerged completely in a Bacta tank, unable to move. His legs and arms were gone, destroyed in the hangar, and he was now just a suspended head and torso. Outside of his tank, he saw a door open, and Yoda walked in with Obi-Wan Kenobi just behind him. Grievous growled angrily. He hated the Jedi. From what he was told, they were responsible for what happened to him. On Kali, his home planet, the Jedi shot down his ship, and it was Dooku who saved his life and gave him a place within the Separatist army. And so Grievous spent every day fighting the Jedi out of hatred. But today, Obi-Wan Kenobi entered the room with information that could change everything for Grievous. The Jedi had spent many months researching Grievous, wondering where he came from, why he fought for the Separatists, who he was. And once he was captured, Obi-Wan went to the research team and took over, bringing them to Kali to learn more. Once there, the group discovered the crashed ship of Grievous, and inside of it the forensics team was able to recreate the explosion. The explosion simulated an explosion of a Separatist ion bomb, and so the Jedi were ready to present Grievous with a long overdue truth. Obi-Wan began presenting the evidence to Grievous, saying that it is Dooku who is his enemy, not the Jedi. The Separatist Ion Bomb was from Dooku. Grievous was, expectedly, not open to this idea at all. His hatred of the Jedi was blinding to him, but Obi-Wan and Yoda decided to leave the evidence here and allow Grievous to recover in the Bacta, and hopefully come to his senses in time. There was no rush. To the Separatists, Grievous was dead and with his absence, new leaders were having to step up. For days, Grievous would be in this Bacta, being fed nutrients, recovering enough to have normal thoughts, and eventually Grievous would see through the hatred. He began to realize that the Jedi were telling the truth, and he was manipulated by the Sith. Unfortunately, after another day, Grievous' heart began to fail beyond repair, and so he asked once more for Obi-Wan. Grievous knew he didn't have long, but he did have an idea. And so Grievous decided that before he dies, there is still something he can do that will give him peace before death. He told the Jedi that he could end the war right now, with one simple command. But if he does this, the Jedi must promise to provide Kali, his home planet, with an extreme abundance of food, water, shelter, medication, and other supplies. If he does this, the Jedi must help restore Kali to thrive once more. Obi-Wan asked what this command is, and so Grievous told him about Order 99, which only he, Dooku, and Sidious could activate. Grievous also promised he doesn't know who Sidious is, and so Obi-Wan took this information to the Jedi Council. Inside the Council, everyone attended, and Obi-Wan laid out the pros and cons of activating this order, at least from what Grievous told him. Once the order is activated, the droids will target anyone who commands them, and then anyone who is fighting in the army. This did not include citizens, or the Separatist Senate, with members like former Senator Mina Bonteri, but it would target the Separatist Council, which contained Newt Gunray, Poggle the Lesser, Watt Tambor, Sandhill, among others. And the Council debated this for a long time, over the ethics of it, but ultimately they decided this would end the war today, and ultimately save potentially billions of innocent lives. And so Grievous would be moved to the communications room, where he could send the message. Grievous was moved, and before long he would give the Jedi the communication code to send to every single droid in the Separatist Alliance. There was a risk that he could contact Dooku like this, but the Jedi could feel that Grievous was doing what he promised, 
in exchange for help for his world. And so, before long, the code would activate and the communications for every single droid opened up, and with a raspy voice, Grievous said the words, Execute Order 99. And across the galaxy, without any warning at all, every single battle droid shut down for about one second as their systems reset and then they all turned on their leaders, firing at them. Above Cato Nemoidia, Newt Gunray was meeting with a group of fellow Nemoidian leaders when commotion was heard outside his door. He got up angrily to see what it was, and as he reached the door, dozens of battle droids were running through the hall and they fired at him, completely destroying Gunray where he stood. On Skago Minor, Watt Tambor was experimenting with a captured clone, trying to learn battle strategies of the Republic, when a D-1 aerial droid smashed through the window, slamming into Tambor. Many, many more followed. Tambor was extremely confused, but they all shot him dead, and this would, in time, allow the clone Echo to escape. On Geonosis, Poggle the Lesser was overlooking the Geonosis arena from his suite, overlooking a ceremony when he heard a group of super battle droids marching through the hall. Poggle turned to see what was going on, and the supers fired missiles at him, obliterating Poggle where he stood. And on Monolist, San Hill was in the banking offices moving money around in order to help Dooku pay for more droids, when he felt a knife go through his spine. A group of commando droids snuck in and killed him where he sat. This happened throughout the galaxy to Separatist admirals, leaders, commanders, as their droids suddenly turned on them, overwhelming them with firepower, killing them immediately. And once all of the leaders of the Separatists were taken care of, the droids began targeting each other, wherever they were. On battlefields, clones and Jedi were left completely speechless and surprised as the droids they were fighting suddenly seemed to just join their side, taking out any Separatist leaders and then fighting amongst themselves until they were completely wiped out. As for Dooku, he was interrogating the recently captured renegade Sith Maul aboard his ship, when it suddenly began to shake heavily. The ship was taking extremely heavy fire from its own fleet. Dooku stumbled to the bridge, where all of the battle droids turned and fired at him. B-1 droids, super battle droids, commandos, his own magna guards, and even droidicas surrounded the Sith Lord. He ignited his lightsaber, deflecting what he could, shooting lightning out at them, and he moved to the escape pods. But as he reached them, they were suddenly ejected into space. Dooku was again surrounded on his ship, as it was blown up from the others, and he and Maul died in the explosion. All of this would happen in a manner of around 20 minutes, and the Separatist army was basically wiped out to nothing. And Chancellor Palpatine, secretly Darth Sidious, leader of the Separatists, sat at his desk feeling immense panic, frustration, and fear. Something has gone terribly wrong. He was trying to contact Dooku, Gunray, San Hill, Admiral Trench, literally anyone. But it was radio silence as the Republic reported victory after victory over the Holonets. And inside the temple, after Grievous gave the order, he took his final breath and died, hoping that he may have saved his home planet. The Jedi Council would soon get back together, and each one of them would lay out what was happening on their battlefields. It was over. The droids turned on their own people, and then on themselves. The war could finally end. And still in his office, Palpatine was deciding what to do next when Anakin and Windu entered, requesting access to the Republic Holonet broadcast. Windu said they are here to tell the galaxy that they found a way to win this war. Anakin was smiling, radiating happiness for the first time in a long time. The war was over, and Windu asked him to help address the galaxy about it ending. He was the face of the Republic war effort after all. Palpatine was seething with rage, but he hid it and allowed the Jedi to speak to the galaxy. And so they did. Windu and Skywalker sent out a live message to the entire Republic, and they were a beacon of hope. As the people watched these Jedi describe that the war was over, the people felt extremely grateful for the Jedi. And when it was over, Palpatine was contacted by Mas Amida, who said that the Senate was gathering for an immediate emergency session. Palpatine was running out of options. He knew he would be forced to give up his emergency powers, so he decided on a plan. A plan that would involve chaos and death until he has what he wants. So he had his personal shuttle loaded with explosives by his loyal Coruscant spies, Wishing it didn't have to come to this, his plans were just ruined, and the galaxy was uniting behind the Jedi. How unfortunate. He would have to eliminate the Senators and Jedi that oppose him. And so in the Senate chambers, basically every single Senator was here in person. And with them, the Jedi Council along with Anakin Skywalker waited as Chancellor Palpatine began to rise in his center pod. 
He was wearing a huge smile on his face, and soon began talking, thanking the Jedi for bringing a swift end to this terrible conflict. As he talked, Palpatine clicked a hidden button on his wrist, and his shuttle began an immediate autopilot takeoff to his exact location. Palpatine talked and talked, pretending to be excited about the future, saying that he will be reaching out to the Separatist Senate to negotiate their return to the Republic, when the Senators and Jedi suddenly heard something just outside of the building. And in seconds, the roof burst open as Palpatine's shuttle crashed into it, and inside the shuttle, tons of explosives began to go off, creating a huge fire that was going to spread throughout the building. But luckily, the Jedi Council was here. Every single member reached up to the ceiling with the Force, creating a protective shield, coming together as one to hold off the explosion. The Jedi held back the fire, lined up in a row of Plo Koon, Kitfisto, Sazy Tin, Shock T, Stas Ali, Agen Kolar, Depa Balaba, Coleman Cash, Apo Rancis, Luminara, Pieri Mundi, Mace Windu, Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Anakin. The Senators were scrambling to evacuate, as the fire was coming down, debris was raining from the ceiling, but Palpatine began to laugh through the chamber, using his emergency lockdown button to shut all of the exits. And he began spraying lightning across the room. He would kill every Senator, eliminate the Jedi Council, and take the galaxy by force with the clone army. He sprayed lightning out from his fingertips, and it pierced through the unsuspecting senators, killing them quickly. There were around a thousand senate pods, and Palpatine was destroying pods, electrocuting senators, killing them in any way he could. And as he was doing this, Anakin looked to Obi-Wan and Windu, alerting them as to what was going on. They were initially too distracted by the explosion to see it, but now the three Jedi broke off from the group and leapt down to Palpatine. They ignited their lightsabers in the air, deflecting lightning until they all landed on his pod. The Sith Lord pulled out two crimson sabers and cut a hole in his own pod, then floated down to the ground as the three Jedi followed. All around them were the sounds of screams, explosion, and chaos. Sidious loved it. He laughed and spun at the Jedi, knocking Windu and Skywalker back a step, then engaging with Obi-Wan. Sidious moved his two sabers with electric speed and he was impressed with Obi-Wan's ability, but Sidious was soon able to cut into Obi-Wan's leg, then cut off his right hand, but before killing him, Anakin got back in and pushed Sidious backwards. Windu also rejoined the fight, and the two of them pushed Sidious back to the wall. Sidious only continued to laugh, waiting to crush these Jedi under a falling senate pod, when suddenly a blaster bolt hit him in the shoulder. He turned to see Padme shoot him with her blaster, and with a scowl, he blasted Padme off the wall and into the ground. But this distraction was just enough. Anakin was able to cut through both of Sidious' sabers, then spin around and stab him through the heart. Sidious' eyes went from anger to surprise to fear, and then to failure as he fell dead on the ground. Anakin ran to Padme, while Windu ran to Obi-Wan. Both said they were fine, and to go get the Senators out of here. Among the other Jedi, Yoda could sense they were losing their strength, and so he made a choice. Yoda ordered the rest of the council to evacuate the senators. He will hold off the explosion himself for as long as he can. They all hesitated a moment, but then began to move away, all of them nodding at Yoda as he closed his eyes, giving himself fully to the force one final time. The rest of the Jedi cut open the emergency exits, evacuated the surviving senators, and got everyone out just in time. And as the senate building was emptied, Yoda let go, and the explosion overwhelmed him as the building began to tumble to the ground. He held on to let everyone escape, and it was his final act as Grand Master. Over the next few weeks, the galaxy would begin to recover, the droid army ripping itself apart, followed by the Republic Chancellor trying to kill everyone in the Republic was a lot to take in. The Jedi Order, without a Grand Master for now, would send aid throughout the galaxy to whatever planet was in need, Separatist or Republic. As Separatist planets were beginning to rejoin the Republic, as negotiations took place for the official end to the war. Countless planets would go through the process of electing new senators, and the galaxy was in a period of peaceful transition, as Dooku, Maul, Sidious, and all of the Separatist leaders were just… gone. Over time, the Jedi would elect Mace Windu as the new Grand Master, and they would choose to stay as part of the Republic, in order to make sure that the people were safe. And Windu's first act as Grand Master was to send a huge amount of Jedi aid to the planet Kali, the home planet of General Grievous, who helped end this war once and for all. Kali would thrive once more, and the Jedi would tell the people that this was all because of Grievous. 
Anakin would soon be made a master and elected to the council, as he had the trust of Grand Master Windu. Of course, this trust would almost immediately be broken, as Anakin took some time away to be with his wife and kids. That's right, his wife and kids. Windu wondered what Yoda would have done here, but he allowed Anakin to stay in the Order at his council position, as he would bring a different perspective to the council. And through the years, the galaxy would be at peace, thanks to Order 99. And folks, let's talk about today's story. First, quick shout out to all the new members, everyone that's become a member to see the Bad Batch streams. Much appreciated if you want to become a member, link in the description. Extra content there. All the what-ifs are free, of course, on this channel, but just some extra stuff. Anyways, this story, Order 99, is this thing that is very, very niche in Star Wars, I think, Legends. It was in, like, one comic issue tested on one battle droid, but I thought, why not make a whole story on it and just totally, like, uproot canon? So in canon, Sidious, Dooku, and Grievous never actually met to discuss this order. In canon, the Jedi never tracked them to the base on Bogoa, but I wanted to make it fun, and I thought I did I thought I did a fine job. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought of this story. Just, you know, taking the small concept of Order 99 and making it galactic shifting. I liked it. I also, something I want to do is I want to make all my videos basically at least 19 to 20 minutes. I've done a lot more 13, 14, 15 minute videos recently, which just doesn't feel as satisfying to me. So I do want to shift back to being at least 19 to 20 minutes. So yeah, more focus will go in on that. Hope you guys like that. You know, I know people sometimes like the shorter content, but we're going to just, you know, 19 to 20 still isn't super long. And that's, I think, my sweet spot. So let me know what you think of the reverse order 66, basically taking out Dooku, all the separate leaders. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.